So I recently made a huge mistake selling an item on eBay and it cost me over $200. And I've made a previous video where I told you guys my average sale price had went all the way up from $44 all the way to $69. And you know, making sales like this is the reason why I was able to get my average sale price so high. So within this video, I'm gonna give you guys all of the details and help you guys avoid making that same rookie mistake. Basically, you can call it somewhat of an oversight that I made and how I was able to actually recoup that money and make an appeal and get that money back from that situation. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all, so first things first, I ended up selling this Bow CD player for over $200 on eBay. I actually sold it for $189, and of course, I charged shipping. For this particular Bow CD player, I believe I spent about 50 bucks for it. It was in really good shape, and even when I was testing it out in the store, I realized that the CD player did not work. Um, I've sold a ton of these Bow CD players in the past, and this one was actually kind of special because it had the multi-CD player attachment with it as well, and that one just gives it a ton of value. And of course that multi CD player wasn't working either, but at the end of the day, uh, the radio was working fine, the LCD display was working really well. And if it did work, it would sell for over 400 bucks, but since it didn't, I listed it for under $200 and it sold within about two weeks of me listing the item, so I was definitely excited about that one. But the downside to it is that when the buyer actually received the item, shortly after they opened up a return request saying that the CD player didn't work. Here's the rookie mistake that happened on my part. So when I listed the CD player, I said parts and repairs in the title, parts and repairs in the description, but in terms of the condition description, I said it was used. And usually anytime you're selling an item for parts or repairs, you wanna make sure that you're putting parts and repairs in all three sections, in the title, in the item description, in the condition description. You just wanna put parts and repairs anywhere that you're where anywhere there, there's an option to put parts and repairs, you wanna make sure that that is all over the listing. And for me, I made that mistake. And like I said before, more of an oversight on my part, and I had no clue that it was actually gonna have this type of effect. But like I said, these type of things happen, even if you're somewhat of an experienced seller like I am. So as soon as the buyer opened up the return request saying that the CD player didn't work, of course I messaged them and let them know that of course, you know, I put that in the title and the description, and I was hoping that they would just close the request, but of course they did not close that request and they ended up shipping out the item back to me. Here's the thing that actually ended up saving me in the long run, because anytime I ship out like an electronic, especially something that's super heavy and bulky, like that Bose CD player, I bubble wrap it, I put airbags in it. I usually always save any like recyclable packing materials that I get. So I actually had two big foam boards as well, and that's the only thing that the buyer actually returned to me. They returned the CD player with just the foam pads. They didn't bubble wrap it, they didn't do anything to make sure that the CD player would get back to me in the same condition. And once I got the CD player, the CD player was actually broken. The display was completely busted. Um, the sides where the speaker grill was, that cracked. And of course, you know, I wasn't gonna be able to flip it back on eBay and even possibly sell it for 200 bucks again because like I said, the, the overall shell of the CD player was broken. So once I realized that, I reported the buyer. I tried to create a case right then and there, but I realized I wasn't able to do that. So the buyer ended up getting um, all of the money back. The return request was closed once I received the item and the buyer uh, received their money back. So once the case was closed, I actually appealed it and I was able to send photos within the appeal, basically saying that the buyer returned me the CD player completely broken and I wasn't able to uh, resell it on eBay. And a few minutes later, I actually got a form where it was a simple affidavit where I just had to sign it and outline the fact that, you know, I returned the CD player in just terrible condition and I wasn't gonna be able to resell it. And once I sent them that affidavit, they actually refunded me the full purchase price of the 200, I think it was 203 so I was definitely super excited about that and in terms of the overall timeline of this whole situation it took right about a month from the time the buyer opened the return up until the time that I got refunded from the original um, from the original start of the case so 
it was a fairly lengthy situation, but at the end of the day, you kind of always just have to stay consistent. You have to stay on top of these things, especially when you're dealing with items that's over 200 bucks. Because for me, anytime there's returns or maybe a buyer has a problem with certain items, I usually would just refund them, possibly tell them to ship it back, depending on what the item is. Sometimes I might tell them to just toss it. But for this particular CD player, I was actually prepared to just take my L and relist the item and make sure that I just wrote parts and repairs in all of the places that it mattered most. But once I received the CD player completely broken, I realized that, you know, I had to make this appeal. And the funny thing is about this whole situation is that I was actually kicking myself for not putting parts and repairs in all of these areas. But at the end of the day, the buyer actually played themselves by not shipping the item back, um, just not taking the proper care and, you know, shipping the item back to me safely. So that's another tip that I have for you guys, especially if you're brand new to eBay or even if you're you know, a more of experienced seller, you always want to double, maybe triple wrap um, heavy electronics because when you're shipping out items, UPS, FedEx, the post office, sometimes they just toss some of these packages, it bounces around in the truck, and these type of things happen. So I was prepared to just chalk it up and call it a cost of business, but with this particular situation, I was glad that eBay was actually, you know, eBay actually had my back. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is that I don't think the money came from the buyer. I think this was all a part of eBay's money back guarantee, so I think eBay tried to make the buyer happy and of course they made me happy as well by covering me so I think at the end of the day I made a mistake. I played myself. The buyer made a mistake. They played themselves. And at the end of the day, we kind of both was able to kind of walk off basically scotch-free. Everybody won at the end of the day. But I just wanted to make this quick video, kind of outline those situations in terms of how to go about an appeal, make sure that you know about shipping, but most importantly, you know about putting parts in repairs in all of the areas of your eBay listing that matters most. So if this was helpful, make sure that you guys drop a like, and drop a comment, let me know your thoughts on this video. And if you're interested in how to increase your average sale price and make more money on eBay and actually do less work, check out my last video. I'll put that up right here and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.